Hi, this is Voice of the St. Joseph Sports Network, Matt Martucci, and you're listening to Sports and Rants on Radio 1851. And we are on live with former Philadelphia Eagle, long snapper and pro bowler, Mike Bartram. How are you doing today, Mike? Doing great. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate you having me on. So have you, have you uh, kept up with the football season so far? Well, we... <laughs> My uh, my wife and I are pretty busy. I'm actually a county commissioner back here in Ohio, and uh, she's a PT, and then also I'm the head football coach. So uh, as far as high school football around here, um, you know, we we stay up on that. My oldest son's a sophomore, and uh, the other kids, uh, the next one's an eighth grader. So we stay pretty busy with them, and then the other two, they're in, they're active too. So I I don't stay up as well as I should with uh, with the NFL stuff and college stuff. But uh, when every, anytime a game's on, I try I try to catch it. And I root on my buddies and. Uh, always have a special place in my heart for Philadelphia. What does the job of a county commissioner entail? What are your day-to-day operations? Um, pretty much we oversee the budget uh, for a county engineer, uh, which is a pretty big budget. That's that's about a $2 million budget, $3 million budget. Uh, we oversee county general, which oversees uh, the auditor, the treasurer, the sheriff's department, uh, EMS, um, we oversee that, so we're looking over about twelve to fifteen million dollars, and and uh, yeah. So I, I love numbers. I've always loved numbers. I got my degree in education. I uh, thought I might want to go into teaching, and this this uh, commissioner thing came up a few years after I retired, and uh, I got fortunate. Uh, God bless me to to run independent and not be a, a get, get into the political scene and try to just do what's best for the people and for God, and and that's what uh, God's allowed us to do the last six years. So I've been in there six years now, and. Um, and a lot of it's economic development, um, our ER in our county, which is probably crazy for you all to hear, but our whole county of 23,000 people have not had an emergency room for the last, uh, since 1999, wow. so 15, 15 years. And um, so we've been working really hard, and the commissioners even before us, uh, the commissioners are in there now, myself and two other gentlemen. Um, there's three commissioners per county in Ohio. Every every county in Ohio has three commissioners. We work uh, hand-in-hand with our economic development to try to get that back to Meigs County. And we just opened up last week, saw their first patient, which I feel terrible because I don't want anybody going to the ER, but there's opportunity for pe- for people to actually live in our county because before they were going up to 30 minutes to 40 minutes away uh, to be able to you know, go to an emergency room. So uh, that's precious time when it comes to stroke victims, you know, the elderly and heart and that type of thing. So, uh, so we just opened up our new ER last week, and it's been very successful the first week in the opening. And uh, so we're doing a lot of stuff like that. We have a brand new EOC center, which is emergency operations center that houses our 911. Eventually, we're going to move our EMS there. Uh, we have an FQHC, which is a federally qualified healthcare system that allows people that have insurance or do not have insurance to come for not only uh, medical but also um, dental. Um, we're working on a new thing for people, you know, because everybody has eye problems, and uh, so we're, we're working on a new thing to try to get them bills seen for for an optometrist in the county. Um, so that's really good positive stuff on, on that end. But uh, but I miss, I miss I miss my buddies. I don't miss playing football because <laughs> I'm so busy, uh, but I do miss my buddies. And I was actually in Kansas City this past weekend, our godson. I lived in Kansas City for eight years when I started out with the Chiefs. My wife got in PT school out there. So we flew out this past weekend to watch him play at Central Missouri, then went to the Chiefs game on Sunday to see Coach Reed and, and saw his wife Tammy and, and saw you know Coach Melvin and, and Doug Peterson. He's he's offense coordinator out there. and uh, Just saw a lot of guys that I hadn't seen in a while. Plus, we still have a lot of really close close friends out there in Kansas City living there eight years. So how did you go from playing in the NFL to, as now as you say, uh, county commissioner? Um, well, actually, my buddy is a juvenile judge, probate judge in the county. He and I played high school football together. So when I came back home, um, we we – just I didn't know where God was going to lead us. My wife and I, she was she already had her thing with the PT, so she can pretty much work anywhere at the clinics. And she actually works at a uh, rehab place now that's a nursing home slash, and they do a slash rehab that they do a lot of outpatient stuff. So she really enjoys that, and it's about five minutes from the house. And so I didn't know where God was going to lead me. And and uh, we were heading to church one Sunday in that 2007 after I retired. And she said, wonder if we can get enough money. We go right past our high school where she and I graduated uh, to go to church. And she said, wonder if we could make, you know, raise enough money to put a new track in. Well, about $2, $2 million later, five years later, we put a new stadium. Uh, we have uh, cross-country trails. We have like 
73 acres. We set up a, a MLEF, which is called the Meg's Local Enrichment Foundation, along with myself, my wife, and about two other, three other families that have graduated from Meg's that wanted to do something to try to give back. And uh, so all donated dollars, so brand new, about $1.2, $1.3 million stadium uh, that they they never had before. It was a practice field. New track, cross-country trails of like four four miles of cross-country trails for our cross-country, uh, not only for Megs, where I, where we where we are, Nesk School District, but also the two other school districts in the county can use. So um, in, that, in that time of going to those meetings and doing all the fundraising that we did, I started going to some other meetings uh, on county stuff that we could do for the county, too. So that's when my buddy, Scotty Powell, that's a juvenile judge, said, won't you just run for commissioner? And I was like, kind of like you all, like, what's a commissioner do? You know, Because <laughs> I didn't know either. And uh, went in there and did my due diligence and, and, and said, you know what, maybe that's where God wants me to go. And uh, the football coaching thing came later. It just came, uh, this is my third year as a head football coach this past year. Um, one of those things that kind of came in, it came into play after the commissioner thing because uh, I just really enjoy helping people and giving back and paying it forward, and, and that's what God really has on my heart. And then this football job came available. My best buddy uh, that was two years ahead of me in high school, uh, he graduated in 86. He went to Ohio State and played. I went to Marshall. Uh, he had since, after after graduating from Ohio State, went to OU as a GA, which is like 25 minutes from our, our place here at Meg's. And um, he ended up getting a head coaching job here at Meg's. I was here 19 years, and he was just ready to step down. Just, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but politics, sometimes it gets into play and everything. And he was just ready. And, uh, you know, he and I are best friends, and I called him and had a heart-to-heart with him and said, hey, would you mind if I put my name in the hat? I'm not saying I'd ever get it. And uh, he said, yeah, that's, you know, I would love for you to do that because I want the program going to somebody that he would trust. And so uh, so I've enjoyed doing that, too. We went 7-3 the first year. Uh, last year we went, um, I'm sorry, five, uh, three and seven. Then we went seven and three. And this past year we went five and five. So we kind of slid back a little bit this year. But uh, hopefully we're uh, making an impact on on young men, and that's what we're trying to do with the program. And uh, so I, I enjoy the commissioner thing. I enjoy being a football coach, but uh, I miss Philadelphia. <laughs> so for you, how how different is that now, coaching the game rather than playing it? It's tough because you don't have that control like you feel. So if I screw up a snap or if I have a good snap or if I miss a tackle or have a good tackle, it's on me. And it's not when you're coaching. And, uh, you know, I remember talking to Coach Harbaugh and Coach Reed and Coach Holmgren and Coach Parcells, all the great coaches, my college coaches. And, you know, they all said that uh, the ones that played football, it's a lot harder coaching it. And I'm thinking – how could that be harder? You know, that can't be harder, Coach, because you're, you, don't, you don't have to worry about as much. Well, I think you worry double more. You know, we got 40-some kids on the team, so I worry, you know, 40 times more um, trying to make sure you're putting them in a position to be successful. And But I enjoy it when that, when that light bulb comes on and a kid understands a technique that you're working or, you know, they do good in class because they know they got to do a good in class to be able to keep their grades up to play football. When those light bulbs come off, it's worth every minute of coaching and, and um, I, I really, really enjoy teaching kids, and, and our coaching staff is awesome. We've had uh, three or four coaches, and actually two of them actually left last year to be head coaches, uh, one at a neighboring school, and he took his coach with him. And, uh, you know, and that's what you want because when I look back at, the, you know, Coach Holmgren's staff back in, back in the day in, in Green Bay in 94, 95, 96, all those coaches that are now head coaches or coordinators, and I was like, man, that's going to be really tough on a program to lose. But God just keeps providing and we just have the best coaches in the world. So, And that's what we want. We want them sharing the word and sharing what we're doing to try to build a, not just a football team, a program that, that people are proud of and parents want their kids to be involved with. Now, long snap is not a position a lot of people choose to play. What made you become a long snapper? Um, back at Marshall, uh, my sophomore year, uh, Coach Don and Jim Donner was the offense coordinator, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I know he's at Oklahoma. He came in as our head football coach. Coach Chomp, uh, that recruited me at Marshall, went to Navy, and Coach Donnan came in. And he brought a new staff in. Uh, coach Briner, Greg Briner, was the uh, quarterback coach with the Colts before he came to us. Well, we go through spring ball because he came in uh, that spring in January, January, February, when Coach Chomp left. And uh, he said, hey, you know, um, you know, you're tight end, you know, 6'4", probably 220, 225. 
uh, was still working on trying to get bigger, stronger, faster. I wasn't a you know very fast guy ever, but uh, had decent hands and I could move decent and, and had a knack to try to get open that type of thing. And and I blew my knee out, so I, I tore my ACL, PCL, LCL in the spring game of 1990 and i'll never forget that day it was just one of those things that you go through in your life it's you know we tell our team you know our three years we've been here we tell them it's not what happens in your life and they finish the sentence it's, it's how you deal with it and god just blessed me with great doctors you know my, my wife that was in my girlfriend supported me my parents the coaching staff and i was able to come back and play my last two years well, Greg Briner comes to me in the off season because I missed a whole year of football. Because back then it was nine to twelve months of rehab. You know, I mean, it was not like today. You can have <laughs> surgery today in three months. You're playing. You know, I was like, what? You know, but back then it was uh, it was pretty intense. I got a couple big zippers on my on my knee, and thank you Jesus, I have some problems with it. But you know, it's just part of life growing up. But I mean, I was able to play after that plus. 13 years in the NFL. So during that time, Coach Briner said, you, you need to work on your strength and your conditioning, get your knee healthy. He said, you need to start snapping. I said, you know, snapping? He's like, like, what do you mean? He's like, I was in the NFL for a few years. He said, you're a perfect prototype to be a good long snapper. You're athletic. You can, you know, I was a quarterback in high school, so I could throw the ball decent. Um, so I just taught myself how to snap, and uh, so I never really had anybody teach me, and just was able to do it my junior and senior year, and then was able to, you know, very fortunate. And actually, I went to the Chiefs as just a tight end. They already had a snapper or two out there, so I didn't get a snap until 95 when I was picked up by the Packers. So that's when I kind of got the niche, like, hey, man, I need to do this. So my kind of thing was, like, I can do this, but then I can play a tight end position, too, that saves a roster spot. So that was the kind of thing that uh, really helped me stay in the league. And actually, I just talked to Coach Melvin, the coach there in Philly, and was my tight end coach out in Kansas City over the weekend. And I said, how's your snapper? And he said, oh, he's a great guy. So I wasn't able to meet him, but one of these days, hopefully I'll meet him. But he, he just he just says he's a good dude. And I said, that's all matters, you know. If he's a good snapper, that's fine. But the the better part of it is he's a good person. You know, he's not arrogant. He's not, you know, one of those types of things where he's just happy to be there, very fortunate to, to be able to do it. And he said, well, that's all he does. He said, he said, I think you were probably one of the last ones to ever play another position. Because nowadays, evidently, in the NFL, it's either, you know, you snap and that's it. So your roster spot is just like a kicker or a punter. Unless your kicker can be a punter and your punter can be a kicker, you know, you're saving a roster spot there. But pretty much the snappers in the league, they, they just snap. They don't play another position. So I took pride in that. There was a few times I was able to get in there and play a little bit of tight end and, and be able to score a few touchdowns and that type of thing on three tight end stuff in the end zone or, you know, in the, in the, the five yards and then in the red zone. But it was one of those things that I took pride in being the best snapper I could be, but also I wanted to be the best third tight end, second tight end, to prove to them that, that I earned my position to be able to play that position. So um, there was one time we played when I was with New England, we played in the Super Bowl, and my best buddy in the world still to this day, Chad Lewis, uh, broke his foot in the NFC Championship game. So I thought, hey, you know, God bless him, and you know, and he wanted me to. Like, this is your opportunity, Mike, to be able to play, and what what better stage to play in the Super Bowl? So they bought, they brought my buddy and Jeff Thomas, and that was my other buddy that played with us in Philly. He'd been out of football that year, and they just wanted that you know thing, which they always told me that what happens if you get hurt. And I was like, well, bring somebody else in if I get hurt, you know, <laughs> you know, just like any position. But they, you know, the coaches didn't feel that way. So I got to play a little bit at tight end, but not as much as I would have because you know L.J. Smith was a starter, and I was a. Uh, I'm sorry, that was not New England. That was in Philly. I apologize. That was in Philly. I should have where my head's at. That was in Philly in 2005. Is that right? When we went to the Super Bowl and played against New England. Oh, four. Four, oh, four, oh, four. Yeah, so that was in Philly. I'm sorry. So Chad got hurt against the Falcons, and then uh, then that, all that happened, and then I was fortunate enough to, to play a little bit, but I, I wish I'd had a better, you know, bigger role as far as playing the tight end position. But it's been a blessing. You know, I look back, and I definitely don't miss playing, but I, I, I miss my buddies, and I, I miss the camaraderie and that type of thing. But uh, I'm getting enough of it where I'm just so busy, as, as you hear me keep rambling on <laughs> about my life. You know, it's just, it's just it's a busy time, but it's a great time. Actually, our first former athlete interview was Chad Lewis, and, and, oh. he, and he spoke about how he knew that the tight end position was in good hands with you going into the NFC Championship game. Oh, really? Yeah. And was there any special team chemistry all throughout? Whether Did you know that going into training camp that you knew you would be contending for a Super Bowl? 
Um, you know what? That year, it, it was one of those things because we were at the championship game, and I'm sorry, like, what, three or four times maybe? Yeah. Yeah, through those years there because I came there in 2000. And I don't know. It's just one of those things that uh, looking back, uh, you know, I wish maybe we'd have done maybe more stuff to, to come together as a team. But I feel we did about everything, and Coach Reed did everything that he could to give us an opportunity to be successful to go to that Super Bowl. Um, but we couldn't just take that extra step those years. We, I, know, I remember, I'm sorry, I can't remember all of them, but I remember we got beat by um, uh, St. Louis in St. Louis for the championship game, and that might have been one of the first, second ones, I can't remember. But And I just remember just because I was in New England. I'm sorry, I apologize. I've been hitting the head too many concussions. <laughs> but I was in New England when I went to the Super Bowl and played against Green Bay in 90, and don't quote me on this, but 96, 97, somewhere in there. Is, and so I remember having that same feeling when we were down in New Orleans and we lost that game and I saw New England just going crazy out there on that field. I was like, I'm sorry, seeing Green Bay going crazy out there on that field and, and just sitting there is like, man, I don't want this to ever happen again. Until you see that happen again, it's like you can't tell other players of how that really feels to lose that game, championship game or Super Bowl. And I think that maybe experience goes a long ways that we could get to there, but we just couldn't jump and have those little things that Coach Reed and what I tell our football team here at Megs every day, did you make your bed? You know, did you did you help an elderly lady when you're when you're at the grocery store? Take her groceries out. Did you do it? Did you did you dot your eyes and cross your t's? Did you do all the little things that end up being big things? And I'd look back that you know maybe we didn't do a good job of that, but maybe we just didn't have the talent to take it to that level. But that Super Bowl loss was um, was really tough, and that year was th- those were just special years because Coach Reed put a and and and, and the GM and. All them and Mr. Lori, they put a team together of guys that really loved each other. I saw at Kansas City, um, I was on the sidelines before the game because my middle son, Zach, he loves the Chiefs. Sorry, guys, but he's always loved the Chiefs <laughs> since he was a little baby. And he was born in 2000, probably, uh, you know, I can't remember where. I think he was born in Kansas City because we were living there then. But anyway, it was like he loved, he's always loved the Chiefs. So with, that was part of his Christmas present from last year to go out. So just he and I flew out to go to our godson's game on Saturday, went to that game. And a guy turns around and said, Bart? Bart like that. And I looked around, I was like, it's Barry. And I don't know if you remember Barry Gardner. I mean, what a great dude, man. I mean, just a great dude. And he and I just hit, you know, we hadn't seen each other since I played, you know, and he's he's helping an agent in Arizona. So they were in town because they had some guys playing on the Seahawks or the Chiefs team. And, uh, you know, and he sent me a text later. I said, hey, I'll exchange numbers. And, you know, because a lot of times, just like you guys, everybody has friends, but they're the friends that you love dear and dear. You might not talk to them for five, ten years, but you just feel that love and that embrace and that camaraderie when you meet them. And, and he put on his text when we texted each other there before I, before I left uh, the game that day because after that we didn't see each other he said love you bro and I said love you too bro and that that's what it was about you know and that's what coach coach Reed and that 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 group of people have done and when I was with New England in 96 97 that's what coach Parcells did that team that we had was probably a I'm just saying an average team but we just did all those little things that added up the big things and got the momentum to be able to you know go play in the Super Bowl against Green Bay but you know like I said Green Bay beat us as New England beat us when I was in Philly so that, that's the reason I'm a little screwed up in my head because I played <laughs> with all those teams and I'm thinking okay what year was that that I <laughs> all right so as we finish up here what's one thing you learned in your football career that you now instill into your kids and your players as well um I kind of hit on it maybe a little bit there is the little things, you know. Um, being so, uh, I remember all those times going to see those sick children in those children hospitals. Uh, the middle son I just took to Kansas City, he has a pelvic avulsion. He uh, he didn't start playing football till seventh grade. We don't let our kids play till sixth or seventh grade. And uh, so he got hit last year in seventh grade, and this year he got hit again. And evidently it was kind of those lingering things, and now it's pretty bad. He can't even play basketball right now. So we're kind of in between doctors to see what they're going to have to do. They have to have surgery, or hopefully it'll heal properly. <laughs> and, you know, your health. You know, and that's one thing, just looking back through those years of, of being with the best coaches in the world. I mean, I'm so blessed to have Bill Parcells and Mike Holmgren and Andy Reid and Pete Carroll and right on down the list of those guys that, uh, you know, just, just did, instilled all those things, all our tight end coaches and special teams coaches, John Harbaugh, uh, Kurt Schottenheimer, uh, Dave Tobe, 
you know, all these guys that coached us through the years. Dante Scarnecchia, you know, that was in New England. He was, I think, he ended up being the line coach there for a few years before he retired. Those guys just instilled so much in me that I try to pour out and pay it forward to these kids um, because that's what it's about. It's about the little things. It's about self-discipline, respect, um, attitude, effort. If you have great attitude and great effort, good things are going to happen. Now, it might not happen tomorrow because you have to have that great attitude and great effort through that perseverance times in your life. But when you come back and you keep persevering and you have a great attitude and great effort, great things are going to happen. And that's what we're trying to instill in our kids here and in our county and uh, not just me. You know, we have two uh, – we have – what? probably 10 other coaches from 7 through 12 we and they're all buying in on 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 what god has put in front of my life that i try to share with them all their all their experiences bringing in our other two commissioners in our county and what their experiences are and just trying to build something special and that that's that's what i look back you know it was just special times those 14 years because i was out one year there in 94 i think it was 94 i was out of football um those 14 years of my life, even though going through that training camp and still getting cut and adversity and, and being told three times in my life I'm not good enough, you know, getting fired, you know, bring you in and say, hey, I'm sorry, we've got to go in a different direction. Those were the best times, which is crazy to say, but those were the best times of my life that I had to <coughs> be grounded, excuse me, to be able to come back. And how are you going to react to it? Just like I said earlier in the, in the conversation, you know, when, when we say a sentence, is not what happens in your life. You ask any Megs football player in the last three years, and they'll finish a sentence for you. It's how you deal with it. And uh, if you got God on your side, um, you know, you're definitely going to deal with it the right way. Well, Mike, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time and the look back on your career. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you guys. Thank you. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. This concludes our podcast of Sports and Rants with Brent and Pan. Thank you for listening. Please follow us on Twitter at Sports and Rants. Like us on Facebook. Remember to subscribe to us on iTunes. And visit our website, www.sportsandrants.blogspot.com. It would help our rankings on iTunes if you rate and review our podcast. Thanks, and have a good day.